Many times in genealogy, there is much devoted to names and dates, but very little devoted to the actual family history. The family stories on hardships, sorrows, happiness, and experiences a family endures are seldom recorded. Many events of the family are lost to the past. As each generation passes in time and no written account is recorded, we the grandchildren lose a small part of our heritage. We tend to disassociate ourselves from a family we know nothing about. Our family has a proud heritage in this country and beyond. They fought for independence in 1776. They helped preserve that republic in the War of 1812. They cried and bled through the Civil War, and they sent their sons to die on foreign land in Celtic Wars, World War I, World War II, and in the Vietnam War. This research on our family is a small contribution to that heritage. I urge all members of the family to, to continue it, to correct it, and to add to it. Copied, edited, and added to the information from James Schofield Sutterfield, Error Lewis, Zachariah Lucas, and Pat Buck. As we look back at our family members in honor of our mother and grandmother, Phyllis Sutterfield, on this day, the 4th of June, we will start with her ancestors, since we can go further back in time with this side of our family. We will take you on a journey through the centuries and see just how honored we are to be a part of each side. We will touch on some of the more noteworthy family members, as this presentation could last days if we mentioned everyone. Our family's heritage starts in the island of Maine. To the left is Ireland, and to the right is England. Numerous wars have been fought over control of this small island, many involving our ancestors. In 1266, the King of Norway sold his suzerainty over man to Scotland, and the island came under control of England in 1341. From this time on, the island's successive feudal lords who styled themselves kings of man, were all English. In 1406, the English crown granted the island to Sir John Stanley, and his family ruled it almost uninterruptedly until 1736. The Stanleys refused to be called kings and instead adopted the title Lord of Man, which still holds today. Queen Elizabeth, is commonly referred to as Lord of Man. This is Castle Rushen, a medieval castle and the former residence of the Lords of Man. Converted for use as a prison in the 19th century, it is now run as a museum by Manx National Heritage. This is a picture of the Island of Man flag today. It carries our family crest three armored legs with golden spurs, known as the Legs of Man. After the death of his father in 1459, Stanley inherited his father's titles, including those of Baron Stanley and King of Man, as well as his extensive lands and offices in Cheshire and Lancashire. It was a formidable inheritance and gave him ample opportunity to gain experience in the leadership of men. At the same time, his father's prominence in the king's household had provided him with an early introduction to court, where he was named among the squires of Henry VI. He married Countess Eleanor Neville, the 16th great-grandmother of Phyllis, and after her death, married Margaret Beaufort, whose son was Henry Tudor and became King Henry VIII. Shakespeare's play, Amid Homus Stanley, depicts this household. William Stanley, the sixth Earl of Derby, has been offered by some theorists to be the true author of the plays of William Shakespeare. The case for the Earl of Derby as the true author of Shakespeare's plays was first made by English archivist James Greenstreet in his works, The Genealogist, in 1891. His and subsequent arguments for the Earl were based on his involvement in theater, his international travels, his intimacy with court life, 
and several poems with the initials WS with an unknown source. It is possible that the first performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream took place at William Stanley's wedding banquet in 1595. While we can find passenger lists of some of our more recent relatives, our early American heritage leads us to the early 1700s in the colonies of Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, and South Carolina. From there, we have so many great recorded stories about the travels of Peter Moore Sutterfield and his family's migration to Tennessee and eventually Searcy County, Arkansas. By the 1840s, our original name Satterfield changed to Sutterfield for unknown reasons. In 1880, the descendants of Peter Moore Sutterfield living in and around Searcy County numbered approximately six sons, one daughter, 20 grandsons, 27 granddaughters, 60 great-grandsons, 37 great-granddaughters, and many, many great-great-grandchildren. Even today, 142 years later, there are many Sutterfields in North Arkansas who are descendants of Peter Moore Sutterfield. As I have the greatest honor of presenting our military veterans, I do not feel worthy of saying their names out loud. These men are heroes who self-sacrifice for something bigger than themselves can never be fully understood or appreciated. They not only fought for their families, but for the great faith they had in humanity and the future of this great nation. For that, I am forever grateful because without their sacrifices, the privileges and rights we enjoy today may have never been known. Starting with the Revolutionary War, our fight for independence, we have Abraham Grooms, drafted into the Virginia militia in Berkeley County in 1777. We have Caleb Stout, a private of the 2nd Battalion Hunterton Militia. We have Job Stout, also a private. We have Owen Thomas and his brother Philip Thomas, who served in Montgomery County, Philadelphia. Their father, David Thomas, was a Baptist preacher and missionary with a master's degree from Brown University. In Virginia, he was a champion of civil and religious liberty and suffered severe persecutions. He was a contemporary of Patrick Henry and Thomas Jefferson and was held by both of them in high esteem. We have Patrick Galloway. Patrick was one of the 500 soldiers killed in the Battle of Quebec, led by General Montgomery, who was also killed, and Benedict Arnold, who was wounded. Moving on to the War of 1812, we have Peter Moore Sutterfield, an important figure in our family and the private in the company commanded by Captain J.N. Williamson in the 2nd Regiment. Moving to our nation's battle, the Civil War, we have Andrew Bain, a Confederate soldier from North Carolina, private in the 35th Regiment. We have Thomas Massey of the Union, Arkansas soldier, Private of Third Cavalry. We have Samuel Stout of the Union in Indianapolis, Indiana. First Heavy Artillery. We have William Ross of the Confederates, Arkansas, Private in the 26th Regiment. We have William Alexander Younger of the Union in Missouri. We have Peter Moore Satterfield Jr. of the Union in Arkansas a private of the 3rd Regiment. Last but not least, of the World War II, we have Jack Pershing Muffet. Jack Pershing Muffet would be our mother and grandmother Phyllis's Uncle Jack, who lost his life in the war on January 3rd, 1944, in Italy. He received a Purple Heart Medal he was 2nd Lieutenant of the 94th Fighter Squadron, 1st Fighter Group. And now, if we could all please have a moment of silence and gratitude for these veterans and any veterans we have with us today.
Thank you. And if anyone sees our family member, Eric Sutterfield, give him a great big bear hug of gratitude from all of us. And if I can end this with a quote from our late president, JFK, he says, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. For all of you who can make it today, I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Today would not be possible without those who came before us. Their personal stories and struggles made way for our stories to be written. And knowing their struggles and stories can help us live a life of gratitude and thankfulness. So please take a minute to look around and be fully aware of the love around you and be thankful for that. And this is our moment in history. So I want everyone to make this moment matter. Uh, I love you all. I see brilliance in every single one of you. And I'm so happy to be part of this family. So thank you.